Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Rudy. Hello. Hi. Hi, Christian. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Wonderful uh, to be in the show. Great to have you. And for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? I'm 30 years old. I live in a small city called Steenbergen. I guess never, no one heard of that, but it's a small city near the Bel Belgian border, near a city called Breda, maybe some other guy that was on your show was living in Breda, so I guess you know Breda. Uh, got a wife, two kids, uh, a dog, and uh, that's about it. And I'm oh yeah, I'm also working at a small co company uh, called Deltcom as a CTO. Excellent. And I always like to ask because enterprise mobility is a pretty broad, amorphous yeah. thing. So, like, what do you focus on within that area? Uh. I guess everyone knows me, uh, the guy who troubleshoot autopilot. So autopilot, in tune, everything that breaks around it, uh, I look at it, and I will hopefully fix it. That's a very active space. So, what was your? <laughs> uh, so you've been a? Is this a second or third MVP? Uh, second. Second time. Hopefully, I'm getting renewed for the third time. But that's right. I guess I am. We're all going through the renewal process. Yes. Stuff in. Putting a, all the stuff in. Such a pleasant process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm always, uh, I'm looking at, oh, yeah. Oh, I need to do that. Yeah. I, next week. Oh, yeah. I still I need to do that. It's, I have multiple reminders set up for that as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what was your path to becoming an MVP? Like, what was your background and what led you towards the MVP program? It's not a path. It's just something I rolled into, stumbled onto. But uh, yeah, I'm working in IT for about 20 years now. The old school legacy stuff, remote desktop, thermal service, Active Directory, and all that kind of stuff. But um, in a certain point of time, I moved on to Microsoft 356 Exchange and uh, a little bit Intune. And uh, I was talking, I guess, uh, three years ago, four years ago with uh, Jasper Bernard. So that's a, a CTO at that time uh, at Wortel, uh, Belgium, Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And uh, he convinced me to put my ideas into blocks. And so I did. And uh, while trying to share the knowledge I had with other people in the community uh, and talking to Alexander Fields, he got me nominated. Uh, so he nominated me for being uh, to become an MVP. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first time I noticed that email, I was like, Okay, that's cool. That's nice to notice that I'm going to be nominated. That's fine. And uh, while talking to uh, another guy, uh, Damon von Robbeis, if I announce it correctly, but a French guy and great guy. And I was talking to him and he was like, aren't you uh, an MVP yet? No, not yet. But I'm talking with uh, the person responsible to become MVP. And he was like, I know her, so uh, it's okay for me to send her an email with my opinion about you. I, I was like, yeah, why not? So he uh, sent her an email, and uh, the next month I became an MVP. So that was, uh, yeah, just three days before my birthday, I got uh, the email the, the 1st of June that, uh, yeah, I was an MVP in the enterprise mobility category. So that was a nice uh, birthday present at that time. You know, one of, the, one of the hardest things is for, uh, well, a couple thoughts there, because I've, I've had plenty of friends that start started uh, like early in their career doing desktop support, yeah. uh, you know, imaging machines, being that kind of good operations, days. IT, the behind the guy running cables, you know, under desks back yeah, in the day, been and, you know, that kind this. of stuff. I know I have two friends that started that way, and um, one had a de degree in music, music composition. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other one had no degree and both are CTOs now. They just kind of, yeah. you know, after 20 plus years, just kind of moved up into those, moved, those yeah, roles. Moved but, on the ladder. But just were self-taught picking up technology, yeah. uh, trying to understand how stuff works. And yeah. I mean, that is a great roadmap for yeah. problem solving. Ooh. And yeah, I know the whole background from uh, Windows 
311, 595, uh, the whole. And for me, it's still the same. I'm looking at the issues in the same uh, way I did back in the days, but now uh, with some new technology, but everything, uh, the the troubleshooting uh, guide is still the same for me. Yeah. Well, one of the but, hardest things is for, you know, people in those kind of in technical roles like that is, you know, like, how do I surface that? How do I share what I'm doing? And that's, that can be a difficult thing. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you picked up, if you prefer writing versus video, like what are your primary contribution types? For now, for now it's uh, writing blogs because uh, the first time I, when I first write my first blog, it was like, it wasn't the best I wrote in, year, in years, but okay, it was something. But uh, the more time you spend in something, the better you become. Uh, so writing blogs is the thing I do now, but uh, apparently I'm uh, going to present some uh, nice sessions at uh, MMS MOA in a couple of months. So that's going to be uh, fun. The first time being uh, of delivering a session about the stuff I do best. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, sharing that knowledge on MMS more, that's uh, going to kick ass. Did you, I mean, did you struggle with, with sharing some of that content or was it fairly easy for you? Uh, it's, I guess uh, in the beginning, it was a little bit hard to uh, find a proper way to tell a story. And uh, while telling a story, showing uh, the people uh, how to uh, take a look at an issue, how to solve that issue, uh, which tools you can use to solve that issue. And uh, for now, and now it's like, yeah, I'm looking at something and I'm such as I can write a perfect blog for that. Uh, today, I was also, and someone reached out to me with an, a TPM at the station issue I never heard of before. So I was like, okay, send me every information you have. I'm going to look at it. Uh, while looking at it, I also reached out to some uh, guys at Microsoft, and I know they are aware of the issue. So that's going to be another block soon, I guess. Yeah, that's a it's a great way to put it. Is that you know it's not just go in and solve the problem, be done with it, walk away, but think about how can I, uh, you know, well, document you need to, it. You know, yeah, and you need to you need to tell a story so it will stick. If yeah. you just uh, put out the facts, it's not going to stick at people. They, uh, if you read a story, just like reading a book, if you read a book, uh, you can you, you can remember it. But if I only throw facts at you and uh, this is a setting you need to do, this is a setting you need to configure, uh, that won't stick. Uh, but telling a story with uh, the configuration in it or at which uh, parts you need to look, in yeah. my opinion, that's a better... Well, yeah, method but that, that's an important difference too, is because you may have gone in, in your research, you found somebody that solved part or all of it technically, yeah. your use case, how you applied it, the story around that, the customer scenario, I mean, that's all of that, more the important industry that you work in, you know, could be, it might, it, where somebody can go and find your article touching on something, if you're referencing that that article somebody else wrote around that or the Microsoft documentation, but they may find your story more engaging. It may, they may connect with that where they yeah. didn't connect with another story. And I love detail. So I'm not going to tell a simple story. If I tell something, it's full of details and sometimes a little bit too much, but I like to take a peek uh, at how stuff exactly works. Not only for, I hate it when somebody tells me this is how it works. Are you sure that's how it works? Because yeah. I want to know how it works. I want to look at the DLL files behind it. I want to know how the Pokemon traces uh, works, how, how how the whole flow uh, works out. Well, the, I mean, the other side of that too is that there's, uh, you know, if with every question, there's nuances to that. Yeah. There's yeah. other... Uh, it, like, so we do a lot of, uh, as I, I help put together AMA. So the ask me anything panel yeah. discussions around technical topics. And it's not just, there's a whole discussion sometimes of they're asking to solve this problem. We talk about what are the different ways that could lead them to having that problem. And there might be different ways of getting there. Yeah. Um, you know, and then of course there's different potential solutions to that. Uh, and so uh, again, there's different paths that's why it's it, you should never just be satisfied well somebody else wrote about it somebody blogged about it like there are people that are interested in 
your perspective, your story. Yeah. And I love to dig a hole. And while digging, just like you said, you're going to dig deeper and deeper. And while digging deeper, you stumble on another question. And you're going to look at another uh, part of the puzzle to solve the question. Yeah. And that's fun, I get. I think. So what are, you, what are your kind of passion topics right now? Like what what what's the major news? What are you writing about, speaking about, doing things about in the community? Uh, right now it's all TPM related stuff. Uh, TPM attestation, which you need at autopilot pre provisioning or, or self-deploying. And uh, I'm working on uh, a lot of stuff about device health attestation uh, because of multiple uh, people reached out to me uh, complaining that the device wasn't compliant uh, because of the BitLocker health attestation rules. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the de uh, device health attestation is like a big world or of details and stuff and nobody exactly knows how it exactly works. Or maybe some, but it's hard to understand the whole flow behind it. Right. So I dedicated some time of uh, mine uh, to take a look at what exactly happens uh, when a device boots, uh, and also how to troubleshoot it. And I guess the troubleshooting part, I haven't seen it yet at uh, the Microsoft documentation. So that's going to be fun. So much of community was built around the lack of documentation or poor documentation from Microsoft. Yeah. So uh, I'm not yeah. going to say that, but yeah, <laughs> I just said it. I mean, well, yeah. look, I come, well, I, mean, look I, I started as a SharePoint MVP. So, I mean, so much of the yeah. SharePoint community was because of the lack of documentation. Yeah. Microsoft has improved greatly, but yeah, true. usually like the sign of the lack of documentation is when you're going and searching for something, you're Googling and the answers are, forums on like microsoft tech community or something yeah. and there's no clear nope. answers like there's an opportunity to go yeah. in to solve it to write content because there's something now of course you can submit documentation so much of yeah. microsoft some excellent content that's out there that is is all community driven yeah uh, so that's something if you can provide a, a a solid blog post that walks through that technical solution yeah. i always encourage people like go back and i look i'm i'm bad at it too is going back to where i found those non-answers go back to the forums and say hey i wrote about this here's yeah, how exactly i saw what this. i do how, what i do right that's, um, yeah I'm sometimes not it's, on Reddit. It, yeah sometimes it's it's uh, yeah yeah there's a lot of follow-up but it's it's yeah. great when when you follow through on that but yeah yeah just uh like the 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 autopilot documentation, the the known issues. Uh, one issue wasn't documented at all, and I was talking to the product uh, owner of product manager of autopilot uh, about something I noticed uh, that was breaking apart in uh, a few months ago. So I wrote a whole blog with all the details why it breaks, uh, and not only that it breaks, but oh, the the reason behind it and. It was so full of details. So I sent her an email. I was like, this is how it is. And it's missing in the documentation. So uh, I would love to see it uh, appear in the documentation. And like a week uh, after someone uh, sent me a PM on Twitter, hey, Rudy, I guess somebody just added some documentation or a known issue to the autopilot. I was like, oh, that sounds familiar, the autopilot marker. I guess I wrote a whole blog, uh, a big blog about that process. That's you just highlighted something else that's a great for people that are interested in you know uh, uh, getting more involved in community, potentially becoming an MVP around that. Uh, uh, a lot of it is your level of visibility with the Microsoft, you know, uh, product teams, the engineering teams, the support yeah. organizations, because they're able to because you can only be nominated by a fellow MVP or a Microsoft employee. Yeah. It used to be for a while, there was a window when yeah, you, you self-nominate. Can... Yeah. Right? <laughs> shut that down. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, but that's a great way of getting noticed is by you find that gap in the documentation yeah. and reach out and, I mean, don't do it as a self-serving, like, hey, take a look at me, but more of, hey, I found this. I did an article on this. Would love to get 
validation i mean because i think yeah. this is missing from the documentation and google help a lot of people who are stumbling on the same issue right and because it's added to the docs they maybe they find it more faster than they yeah use google but yep now, that's always one an exciting thing when you get acknowledgement from you know the, the especially somebody that's very senior in yeah. the product team that's just like you know hey didn't didn't think about that that's a great piece yeah. of feedback that's great you know great information and uh but again i mean that is somebody who potentially you know might follow you that you stay connected yeah. with that uh, may be a point of reference when because they will reach out with nominations into the product team like does anybody know this rudy guy it's like oh yeah no. interact with I, them all so the people know me that's yeah. for sure yeah they know exactly who i am because of also that uh, just like you said i that uh, Windows Print old lingering folder uh, from some time ago uh, when you yeah, wiped your device and uh, your Windows Print old was full of uh, the user folders uh, and the data from your yeah, boss in it. Yep. Uh, that's, yeah, that was me l stumbling on that issue, describing that issue and uh, talking to the product managers. Uh, yeah, and especially one guy. I love that guy. Uh, and he was like, I, we can't give you credit for that, but it, it yeah, you you have to correctly. And also to um I heard they will they will fix uh, the issue in the next update and uh in the next update they uh, fixed that issue indeed. But the same way I was telling uh how you could fix it on your own. Yeah. So that's I was like, Okay, that's my solution, that's my solution. Oh, that's yeah, I know. Almost well, al almost the same. Well, and there's another blog post talking about, hey, they've done an update and they did what James and point back to your other blog post. And yeah, it, it's no, hey, the, look, it's a I, I, I'm a big fan of the community documentation and that interaction between the product teams and community. Uh, and it's it, it, it it's it's not enough to sit and complain that documentation's missing and or we see these problems with it like. Provide the feedback. Pro provide yeah. your workarounds. Um, Talk so with them, the and product team knows, right? Yeah, because and, if they don't know, they can't adjust it. And be positive, be constructive yeah. about that, because that only complaining isn't going to help. Yeah, I always you need to come with, up. You need to come up with a solution or ideas how you are going to look at it and how it could help other people instead of only complaining. It's it isn't there. Well, I was always, you know, I, 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 part of my management style, I was taught early on in a job is like, don't have a complaint unless you have a solution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so uh, things can be ugly the, the way they are because there's not an option. If you have a better idea of doing it, then you have the right to complain about the way <laughs> yeah. it works today. Otherwise, don't complain. Right. Yeah. 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 Love that idea. Anyway. Yeah. Well, Rudy, really appreciate uh, getting to know you. For folks that want to connect with you, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, every social media that exists, I guess. Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Reddit, uh, Discord. Uh, you named it the TechNet community, the Learn uh, uh, forums. I guess I'm everywhere. So, But Twitter, that will okay. be... Uh, well, we'll have all your links, all your data within the blog post and on YouTube as well. So if you want to get in touch with Rudy, you know how to find him. Just uh, follow along in the blog post out on Buckley Planet and uh, follow the video. If you're listening to the podcast, you'll have the links as well. So Rudy, really appreciate uh, meeting you and yeah, hopefully sure. see you at one of these events that are starting to happen again. Hoping so. Hey. Thanks for having me.